All right, folks, let's talk about the debate, if you could even call it a debate. What was that? What was that? That was a disaster, and I'm not being hyperbolic when I say this. That may have been one of the worst debates, if not the worst debates I've ever seen. And that comes after the debate last week, where it was probably the most exciting debate that uh, I've ever seen. Now, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news, obviously, is that the debate was horrific. I hated every aspect about it. But the good news is that if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter, nothing about this debate is going to fundamentally alter the course of the 2020 Democratic Party primary. Like, we entered this debate on a very clear trajectory with Bernie Sanders dominating on Super Tuesday, possibly winning in South Carolina. And that's not going to change because if you watch this debate and you're just like a casual observer, you don't really follow too closely what's going on. There's nothing that you learned from this debate about the candidates. Nothing that you could take away from that debate will make you more informed or knowledgeable when you pull the lever for one of these candidates. It was just a complete mess. Uh, the moderation, first of all, was absolutely terrible. It was non-existent for a good portion of the debate. The candidates, namely Pete Buttigieg, would not stop talking over each other, so you didn't even really know what was going on and the moderators allowed it to happen. You have an audience full of wealthy elites, and we'll get to that, booing Bernie Sanders, very clearly cheering Mike Bloomberg. So, in other words, did he buy the audience? Like, what's going on? On top of that, you have Bloomberg ads airing during the debate. It was it was atrocious. There was no substance. Um, I don't even know who to declare the winner. I think there were some pretty clear losers, but that debate was just a wash. You could have not had it happen, and we'd still be in the same place. I mean, what do you, what do you even say about that? So I've got a lot to say about this debate, but first, let's talk numbers. When it comes to overall talk time, Bernie Sanders clocked in the most time at 15 minutes, 28 seconds. Mike Bloomberg came in second with 13 minutes, 33 seconds. Amy Klobuchar came in third with 13 minutes, 26 seconds. Elizabeth Warren came in fourth with 12 minutes, 53 seconds. Joe Biden came in fifth with 12 minutes, 33 seconds. Pete Buttigieg came in sixth with 11 minutes, 34 seconds. Tom Steyer came in seventh with seven minutes, and three seconds. Now, before we really get into the specifics here, I do just have to uh, note that I will not be able to play any clips from this debate. Um, and I mean, the good news is that I wasn't planning any additional segments because I don't even know what to really single out. But CBS News, they don't respect fair use. And I'm not just worried about getting demonetized because I would play clips for you if I were only getting demonetized. But I'm genuinely worried that they would actually block the video so nobody could watch it. And like a lot of effort goes into these videos. So unfortunately, I will not be able to play any footage footage from this debate. I will be playing footage as B-roll while I speak from the last debate because with MSNBC, I don't have as much of a problem. But let me just say how disgusting CBS News is and why we shouldn't allow corporate corporate media to host these debates like all on twitch uh the serfs progressive voice all types of indie media outlets were getting taken down because uh for whatever reason cbs news decided to hire a consulting firm to go after indie media personalities who were streaming the debate and supplementing it with their own political commentary which is extremely problematic because i mean these debates this is part of democracy so for us to not be allowed to play clips from it and talk about it in and of itself is an issue. But while I'm on the subject of dogging on CBS, they should never be allowed to host a debate ever again. I mean, I thought that CNN was the worst, but CBS News just made them look like professionals over at CNN. That was absolutely atrocious. You can't allow the candidates to talk for 20, 30 seconds over another candidate. Like, what's going on? There was a moment, I kid you not, where Pete Buttigieg must have been speaking over Bernie Sanders for 20 seconds, and you could tell that that was a strategy of his, but if you're a moderator, you can't allow that to happen. You have to stop all of the candidates, and you have to say, you're speaking, then you're speaking. You can't allow, like, four people to talk over each other, because it's just a mess. It's incoherent. What's the value as a user or a reviewer that you can extract from this debate? There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. And on top of that, the audience loved Mike Bloomberg. So 
understand he was absolutely a failure at that last debate this debate was also a disaster so what did he do rather than trying to do a better job at this debate I mean, did he buy the audience? You've got to ask that because they were cheering at everything, including his cringeworthy jokes. And there's a reason why that audience hated Bernie Sanders, hated Elizabeth Warren, and booed them as they went after Mike Bloomberg. As this tweet from the Post and Courier explains, on television, you will see a polished presidential primary debate Tuesday night, the Gaylord Center Performance Hall full to capacity with donors and VIPs who managed to secure tickets from the Democratic National Committee. And as you can see, the cost to purchase a ticket ranged from $1,750 to $3,200. So obviously, if you're a poor person, you're not going to be able to attend this debate. So it was all rich people. Of course, they hated Bernie Sanders. Of course, they were cheering for Mike Bloomberg. How embarrassing is that? Now, when I tell you that Mike Bloomberg bought the audience, well... It was such an obvious thing that news outlets actually asked the campaign, did you buy the audience? And according to NBC News reporters, they say a Bloomberg campaign official says the campaign did not pay people to attend the debate and cheer for Bloomberg, as Josh NBC News reports. And then as you can see from Sam Finkelstein here, he says, maybe the fact that we even need to ask this is an issue? And look, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. They were like, cheering loudly for Mike Bloomberg when he said his line, he'd pause, and then the audience would cheer accordingly because it was something that was obviously supposed to be an applause line. I'm not buying it. Like, that was his strategy. Rather than preparing, he chose to just buy the audience, I'm assuming, but if he didn't buy the audience, the fact that there are very wealthy people there, and only wealthy people, in and of itself, is a problem. Now, going into this debate, Bernie Sanders... And everyone knew that he was going to be the target, right? And the problem with everyone dogging on Bernie Sanders is that they might have gotten a little bit ahead of themselves. Like, they were so anxious to attack Bernie Sanders that they tripped as they raced to smear him. Because their attacks were just all over the place, and I think that they threw too much to where nothing landed. Like, rather than focusing on one thing... They threw everything at the wall and you can like smell their desperation through the television screen as you watch it and their attacks didn't make any sense. So for example, like you saw them for half the debate complaining that Bernie Sanders is too far left, but then they spent a good portion of the debate attacking Bernie because he's not far left enough on the issue of guns. Even Mike Bloomberg attacked him for this. So which is it? If I'm an average viewer, am I supposed to believe that Bernie Sanders is too far left, too extreme, or not extreme enough on this specific issue? You have Amy Klobuchar trying to suggest that he's alienating. Bernie Sanders thankfully cited his favorability. You have Pete Buttigieg compare Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump and how miserable that would be in November. I mean, look, Pete Buttigieg is the Ted Cruz of the Democratic Party. He is revolting. Listening to him speak, I can't take it. Nobody likes Pete Buttigieg. And as this primary goes on, he becomes more and more grating on my fucking nerves. And I, just, I can't take it. I can't take it. I don't want to listen to him speak anymore. This election is going to drive me nuts. <laughs> like it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive me nuts. And look, when it comes to winners and losers, I don't even know where to begin. Is there any clear winners here? Not necessarily. You could probably argue that Bernie Sanders is the de facto winner because nobody did enough to, you know, bring him down as he is the definitive frontrunner. But with that being said, um, are there clear losers? Sure. Nobody stood out. This was a clusterfuck of epic proportions, and I really feel miserable after watching it. Like... <laughs> I went into this debate just feeling really anxious and nervous because I was afraid that everyone would attack Bernie Sanders, but I, I leave thinking, wow, that debate was a train wreck. The very last portion of the debate, you had the moderator or one of the moderators wrap it up and say, well, that's it. And then she was interrupted and then they cut to commercial because they said, no, 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 we have one more thing coming back. And all they did when they came back was they said, um, okay, that's it. Bye. So they literally made us wait until after the commercial just to say, bye everyone. It, it just, it's so shameless. What a shameless cash grab that was. I mean, CBS, they are absolutely terrible. But before I, you know, just spend uh, however long complaining, let me go ahead and get to my winners and losers. This was really tough. I think you can spin this anyway. 
But if anybody tries to argue that, you know, objectively speaking, there was a, a clear winner or loser, I just don't see it. I think this debate was a wash. You know, if the debate didn't take place, it's the same as if it did. It changes nothing. Bernie's still the front runner. He's still positioned to do very well in South Carolina and dominate on Super Tuesday. And we're in the same position. But when it comes to losers, by far the biggest loser again, in spite of the audience trying to boost him, was Mike Bloomberg. On top of that, I put Tom Steyer in the loser category because he had an opportunity to really take votes away from Joe Biden in South Carolina. He didn't do that. Pete Buttigieg, another loser because the entire debate, he kept talking over everyone. He kept trying to interrupt. And that is something that doesn't make you endearing to viewers. Like, it's extremely annoying. Like, if Bernie Sanders was doing this too much... I would be irritated. And I get that sometimes you have to elbow your way in, like to talk at these debates because there's a lot of people, but there's a line and, you know, Pete Buttigieg absolutely crossed it. He did nothing to um, help himself. He's a loser. Joe Biden, this was his moment to really prove to voters in South Carolina that they should go with him and not with Bernie Sanders. His performance was just miserable. Now, when it comes to the OK category... I placed Amy Klobuchar here. She could possibly be in the loser category because she did nothing to help herself. I put Elizabeth Warren in the OK category. She tried to recapture the magic of that last debate by going after Bloomberg. But usually lightning doesn't strike twice in the same area. And we kind of saw that. You know, there was an awkward moment where she was asked if she would move the embassy from Jerusalem back to Tel Aviv. And she just said, no, both parties have to make that decision and people kept trying to correct her and she just kept repeating that same thing no both parties have to make the decision but this isn't about like what israel and palestine wants we're talking about our decision to move our embassy so it was just awkward and when it comes to bernie sanders i think he, he had a phenomenal performance in spite of all of the attacks um but it's hard to declare him the winner even if you can say he's the de facto winner because you know that media is going to do everything in their power to spin it if you've tuned in to cnn msnbc non-stop wall-to-wall anti-Bernie Sanders coverage. It's just a fucking shit show. You have CNN bringing on Michael Bloomberg's surrogates attacking Bernie Sanders. Um, it's just, I don't know what to say. Like, so obviously now I have no winners. I have no winners. Um, I don't think that anyone is truly a winner, but I do have one more um, entity, if you will, that I will add to the loser category. And that's CBS and the moderators. I mean, that was really embarrassing. I, as a viewer, should not have to worry about moderation. It should just be so good that we don't have to think about it. You should be in control of the candidates so that way they're not talking over each other all throughout the debate. But if you have three people talking at once longer than 10 seconds... Something is seriously wrong with moderation. This debate is going off the rails, and it's your duty as moderators to steer it back in the right direction so maybe we can extract some substance out of this debate. But we got none of that. We got none of that, and this was really just demoralizing to watch if you are, I'm assuming, a viewer and you're still trying to decide who to vote for. Like, I don't know at this point who's still undecided, but if you watch this debate, you're not going to be helped with making your decision. Now, I don't have too much when it comes to the specifics here with regard to this debate, but some things stood out to me. So Tom Steyer, for a second time, claimed that he supports reparations, and I give him credit for that. But at the same time, you know, he says he supports reparations, but he invested in private prisons, which Joe Biden surprisingly called out. You have Mike Bloomberg talk about Israel-Palestine and describe illegal settlements as quote-unquote new communities. Just embarrassing. You have Joe Biden complaining nonstop about not getting enough time to speak. It really was irritating, but not as irritating as Mayor Pete interrupting everybody. You have Mike Bloomberg literally invoking 9-11 to make political points, and he did this on numerous occasions. And you have Mike Bloomberg claim that Bernie Sanders isn't electable because he can't win over moderate Republicans. Now, Bernie was correct to cite the polling data that shows he does beat Trump. He should have specifically, like, really emphasized that Mike Bloomberg loses to Donald Trump, according to a poll. Bernie wins by three points. Bloomberg loses by three points. So if anyone is a sure bet, it's Bernie Sanders. I wouldn't say that anyone is a sure bet, but if we want the best chance of beating Donald Trump, 
Polling indicates it's definitely Bernie Sanders. But to Mike Bloomberg's point about needing to win over moderate Republicans, that is a losing strategy. That's exactly what Hillary Clinton tried. And guess what? Moderate Republicans voted with their party. Republican Party voters are not going to switch to any Democrat. They're going to support Donald Trump unequivocally. So what you have to do is make sure that the youth get out and vote, that disaffected voters come out and they vote for the Democratic Party nominee. Do you honestly believe that moderate Republicans are going to vote for Mike Bloomberg over Donald Trump? No, they're going to vote for Donald Trump because even if he may be rude, even if he has these mean tweets, he still does the same Republican Party policies that they all love. So, of course, he's not going to lose their support. But what Bloomberg has to worry about is not getting out the progressive vote, the left vote, right? Because he can talk about Bernie isn't going to win over Republicans, and I'd agree, but neither is he. But for Mike Bloomberg, he's not going to win over the left. I know I certainly am not going to vote for Mike Bloomberg. I'd probably not vote at all. But I mean, this is a real issue. Like, you shouldn't be worrying about winning over moderate Republicans. You have to worry about winning over your own party. And Democrats are so cocky. They think that young people are just going to come out and vote. And 2016 showed that you have to give voters something to vote for, not against. So Mike Bloomberg, I mean, he could say this all he wants, but it, it's sh it's such a losing strategy that in the event it were him versus Donald Trump, not only would he get clobbered at the debates, but Donald Trump would probably win in a landslide. And that's not even me being hyperbolic. Like, I genuinely believe Donald Trump would absolutely destroy Mike Bloomberg. Because the left isn't going to support him. Voters are just going to stay home most likely. What I liked is that even though Bernie Sanders was under fire, he still promoted human rights, the well-being of Palestinians. And when the, you know, inevitable Cuba question came up, he, you know, cited what Barack Obama said. And, you know, he said, look, I'm basically saying the same thing that Obama said. Joe Biden jumped in and immediately contradicted himself, which was so embarrassing. He said, no, Obama never said anything good about Cuba. He said, there's no aspects about Cuba that's positive. All he said is that they increased life expectancy. Oh, what do you think that is, you fucking moron? This whole debate was just awful. Now, th thankfully, we don't have another one until, I believe, March 15th. So after Super Tuesday, after South Carolina, we get a little bit of a break. Hopefully it won't be as bad, but all I know is that everyone was so anxious to attack Bernie Sanders that they just didn't do a good enough job at promoting themselves, and when you try to throw everything against the wall to see what sticks, sometimes you just overwhelm viewers and they don't know what to take away, so that's what I think happened here throughout this debate. Like, they didn't focus on any one negative aspect of Bernie Sanders, they could have all collectively agreed on talking about electability or something or you know but they didn't they just all took turns trying to dog on bernie and bernie did a fairly good job at i think you know thwarting off their attacks he absorbed a lot of their blows and i don't think it's going to hurt him i don't think that he won this debate because that really was brutal and we all expected it to be brutal but certainly they didn't do anything to bring him down and the only people who i really see coming away from this debate more damaged are uh, Mike Bloomberg. Don't know if that's going to make a difference because he has a lot of money. Joe Biden, I don't think he did enough to win over the people of South Carolina. He may still pull out a victory. Still, uh, you have Tom Steyer, who basically, his presence there made no difference. And, you know, going into this debate, if you watch my pre-debate analysis, I said that, you know, Tom Steyer's presence for the left is maybe good because if he does a good job at this debate, he can pull votes away from Joe Biden in South Carolina, I, I don't know that he did anything um, to actually do that. So this debate was completely pointless. I would encourage you to not watch this debate. And I will not follow up this video with additional segments as I usually do. Because again, I don't even know what I would talk about because there's nothing that really stood out to me. And on top of that, CBS News will probably delete all of the videos that I put up. Um, so overall... <laughs> The audience was stacked. The performance of the moderation was terrible. The candidates spoke over each other. Disaster.